This is it. This is the end of the first canon era of the DC Animated Universe films. After 16 movies, it's time to end the New 52. With a sequel to one of my favorites of this canon universe thing. That being Justice League Dark 2 Apocalypse. I didn't really know what to expect going into this one, but I was definitely sad going into this one because it's the end of the entire New 52 canon and it transitions into Tomorrowverse. And without spoiling anything, it ends the same way that it began. I'm not going to say anything more than that. I have a pretty lengthy written review for this one. And while I do have to keep a lot of it vague to avoid spoilers, just know that this is a great note for them to go out on. Here's my written review. I hope you enjoy. Well, this is it. It ends the same way it all began. After 16 films, the New 52 canon era of the DC anime universe filmography comes to a close with one last movie, the sequel to Justice League Dark. I was definitely a bit sad going into this one as these New 52 films have been surprisingly good for the most part, and I wasn't ready yet to say goodbye, but I hoped that it would be a fitting send-off to these iterations of these iconic characters. And thankfully, it is a very strong note to go out on. Now, this is usually when I talk about the story synopsis, but there's no way in hell I can do that without spoiling pretty much everything. So instead, I'll just say that it's the darkest New 52 movie since Constantine's City of Demons and very gripping. I wish I could say more than that, but saying any more would be a huge spoiler. And I do not, do not, want to spoil this movie for you guys. You have to see this one for yourself. Along with saying goodbye to these iterations of the characters, it's also time to say goodbye to their voice actors as they all come together for one final time to deliver some of their greatest performances. Sure, not everyone leaves for good as Matt Ryan does continue to voice Constantine to this very day, but for the big majority of them, Omara, O'Connell, Dawson, Moore, Chase, McIntyre, Walsh, Formiga... Gorham, Romijan, Allen, Alessio, and Luddington, this is their final time voicing these characters, as they'd all be recasted shortly after. The, the only new arrival here is the Candyman himself, Tony Todd, is the new voice for Darkseid, who does an outstanding job. Overall, they go out on a high note. The writing is also some of the best of the entire New 52 era of films, as it's dark, gritty, tragic, and unapologetically adult while also keeping all of the characters in character, with the exception of those that are turned over to Dark Side's side. Yeah, sorry for the pun. The dialogue here is also great, showing how the unfolding events affected all the characters. And it affects them greatly, by the way. I can't go into details of why, but it affects them greatly, and it is going to leave you pretty shocked. While it's not as hard of an R rating as City of Demons, it still very much earns that rating with a massive body count and some of the most gory, brutal deaths of the entire filmography. Not as gory and brutal as City of Demons, but it gets close. This is also coupled with some of the best action as well, delivering on the grandiose battles befitting of a finale. Then there's the great animation, fantastic pacing, perfect runtime, a ton of emotional moments that do hit hard, a sad but unfortunately pretty inevitable ending, high rewatchability, and some of the darkest, most bone-chilling moments in any comic book movie. However, there's a few minor flaws here. Some of the deaths of major characters are brushed away too quick, including the whole taking over the Oa side of the plot felt a little unnecessary, and King Shark being completely new, which allowed Zero time to develop his character, because he wasn't in Suicide Squad Hell to Pay, and he hasn't been in any of these other New 52 films, so he's kind of just here to be here. Which is really weird. I don't know why they decided to throw in a brand new character into this universe at the very last film. It just feels like a weird decision that doesn't quite make sense. 
Overall though, this is an excellent sequel to the first Dark, and a great note for the New 52 to go out on. But it's not quite better than the first because it's just a bit too heavy. In other words, it has the Logan problem. It's a fantastic movie, but it's a bit tough to watch sometimes because it is so gritty and so brutal. So long, New 52 canon. Thank you for all the great things you gave us while you lasted, and a big thank you to the entire cast and crew for all the hard work they put in to bring all these stories to life. And with that, final verdict for Justice League Dark 2 Apocalypse War, the final movie of the New 52 canon, is a strong 8 out of 10. It's not quite better than the original Justice League Dark, but is definitely a great film among the high tier of this New 52, and a very, very good movie to go out on. Excellent job to everyone involved, and thank you for everything that you gave us. Well, that's it. See you next time. We're going to dive into modern times as we begin the Tomorrowverse, starting with Superman, Man of Tomorrow. We can't take it anymore.